This game is T and is not suitable for kids. Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, Artie! And guess. So today I signed up for a Costco membership card. Because we're apparently obsessed with Costco. And the lady there thought I was in high school. She did? <laughs> yeah. She that, was like, that's not surprising. She was like, wow, like you're still in school? You're getting like a Costco card? I'm like, I graduated college. I've been fully employed for like a whole year and a half now. <laughs> She's like, oh, well, good for you. <laughs> so, anyhow. That's hilarious. Welcome back to Miles and Jorah Face Attorney Investigations, everybody. Yeah. We're, uh, we're in the That's middle like part one. That's like when we one. went to Culver's and we were like, oh yeah, you're like in high school, All right, have right? a good summer vacation. I'm like, like, some of us some don't get summer, summer vacation, vacation anymore. <laughs> but we also make a lot more money. It's the real scene of the crime. Yeah. Now this game is going to forever make me think of when you're doing like the rebuttal back and forth with the guy like... Shh. Like, I thought for sure you're gonna make. From now on, this game is always gonna make me think of already signing him for a Costco membership card and being no. mistaken for high schoolers. No, I would have thought of that before anyway. Looks like we found the real crime scene first. Ha! <laughs> Brag all you want, but we don't have all that free time, unlike the two of you. <laughs> you know what reminds what you remind me of? A dog licking his wounds as he whimpers home. Well, I guess I should be thankful for all the time you saved me. ZZ. That's thank you. That's how we say thanks in my country. So he's from China. You're welcome. I hope he realizes we didn't do all of this for him. He comes from Zangfa. You know, where we refueled. Where we refueled? Is that in China? Because, um, uh, I think I, it, that's Chinese? Everyone that's in China. Shay Shay. <laughs> oh, everyone in China's like, duh! <laughs> I don't have any Chinese. Well, I probably do, actually. No, I don't, I don't think, I don't know if people in China can watch YouTube, so... There's it's China, there. not North Korea. What? Well, I don't know. <laughs> but I'm here now, so I'll be taking over. As I was saying, this is where the crime took place. I think the people in China have better things to do than watch a random guy play through a oh, visual novel and do dumb voices and talk about Costco membership cards. Yeah, but Costco's great. It is Good great, muffins. but they don't have it in China. That's true. Lying in wait, how did Officer Meekins even know the victim was going to come in here? Simple. He was investigating the kidnappers, right? And while he was doing so, he came to understand the victim, Mr. Deacon's movements. Ha! Huh. And why would the good officer want to ambush and kill a kidnapper? You mean his motive? Who knows and who cares? You can find that out for yourself when you talk to him in jail. Humph. You have no respect for the order of law. Don't get me wrong, but I need- but I need more than there's no motive to convince me otherwise. I mean, that's true. If you have evidence that someone killed a person, it doesn't really matter what their motive is, they're still guilty. Kind of. He's right. The lack of a motive is a rather weak argument by itself. Although I use that all the time when I'm prosecuting against yeah. people's right, and yeah. it always works. It always works. So the officer lay in wait on top of the stage. Oh, you know another place that has Costco? <laughs> Japan. <laughs> Japan has Costco. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Hold it! So, you agree with how our recreation turned out? Like I said, I'm grateful that you were able to save me some time. Alright, but we still don't know why he chose to wait on top of the stage. Who cares? Maybe he wanted to become the Blue Badger. Who's to say he didn't see the stage and decided to put on a Blue Badger show a stage show of his own? Or maybe there's a completely different reason? What does it matter? It still doesn't change the fact that Officer Meekins stood up on that stage and shot the victim on the ground below. That's the truth of your little recreation show. So his whole his whole argument is basically like, it had to be Meekins because uh he had a gun. It's like, uh, this is like a four year old's argument, this, but he's somehow in charge of everything. I'm Interpol, oh, bleeps. Yeah, <laughs> basically. So you honestly believe that what you're saying is what really occurred? Hey, you're the ones who came up with this scenario. Are you saying you doubt yourself? <laughs> Touche. Unfortunately, Agent Lane's conclusions do not contradict our recreation. Hmm... Then, does that mean it all went down just as he says? No, not quite. I wonder if what we had recreated earlier was the whole truth. Bub, 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 bub. See, this is what happens when we, uh, stop in the middle. Even if we, we recorded, had to. Even if we recorded the di yesterday, I'm still like. So Duh. in the future, would you prefer if we did an entire to be continued section in one recording section? section? No, it, it's fine. I'm just like. I mean, I probably won't even understand anyway what's happening. I think I remember where this is. Oh, uh, watch! It'll be really simple, and you're like, it's because of this and this and this. And it's like, but he had a gun. 
And it's like, that's the contradiction. He had a gun. It's like, yeah, we know that. But I have to point it out. him from on high. Like the angels. Oh, well, In Excelsis Deo. Didn't... Okay, so the entry point was the abdomen, and then out went the shoulder? Yeah. Well, that's... There's a contradiction. So sorry for your stupid... Objection. Okay, good. It, it was what I thought. Cool. I'm terribly sorry, Agent Lane. I should have warned you that our recreation is incomplete. You cut in quite unexpectedly, after all. What's that supposed to mean? You said that the victim was shot by the killer from up above, correct? I hate to break it to you, but that's not possible. Huh? Why not? Recall Mr. Deacon's body, specifically where the gunshot wounds were located. Hmm. Actually, I didn't get that good of a look. Oh, well then. The bullet entered Mr. Deacon in his abdominal region and exited his right shoulder. This is more consistent with the, an angled shot from beneath the victim. Yuck! Then... Yes, our recreation had the victim being shot at an angle from above. A clear contradiction! You're discounting your own conclusions? No, this one point is the only flaw. This was the mistaken parameter in our recreation. The stage's location... The victim and killer's location. Bada bing bada boom, it's true. That's right, the location of the stage was wrong. You mean the stage was in a totally different spot than where it is now? Yes, the stage was situated where the victim was standing in our simulation. Ha! Are you out of your mind, Mr. Prosecutor? I've never heard of a stage show where the stage actually blocks the audience's view. I, I suppose not. That's great. But I swear I know the reason for the error. The location of the witness was our mistake. Edgy Boo, how can you betray me like this? I forgot to be here. Your testimony was riddled with vague statements. Hey now, I can't let you get away with badmouthing a very valuable witness. Besides, if you're saying that it was wrong for you to think she saw it from far away, then perhaps she saw it from up close. That'd make her story even more trustworthy. Uh, I didn't mean it that way. Edgy Boo, you can do it. Hey in there. So the oh wrong God. parameter was not where the witness was. In that case. Yes, the locations of the killer and the victim were wrong. Ah, uh, I get it. I see what you're trying to say. I believe the killer and the victim were standing opposite to what we initially thought. It was the victim who was on top of the stage as he was being shot by the killer. Shot him in the middle of the show! <laughs> it's like John Wilkes Booth all over again! What? <laughs> oh, <laughs> never mind, yeah. yeah. I was like, I, I heard you, I'm like, what? Who is that? And then I'm like, oh, right. If this is what it happened, it'd also explain the positioning of the gunshot wounds. But then, what about the footprint? I love how Emma and Sheena are just like, we're just gonna hang out here, do whatever. For a whole day. Since footprints don't lie, we can assume then that the killer also wore a costume. Okay! I'll try using that data instead! Judging by the fact that both the killer and the victim were wearing costumes, I'd say it was a killing between the two kidnappers. That would be the most natural conclusion. <laughs> Whack a bad finger. Wouldn't you agree, Agent Lane? When'd she show up? Sheena? Yeah. She just always follows Lane around. Mm. I mean, <laughs> oh, I still don't know what to do with her voice, too. She hasn't talked. <laughs> just give her the Mirage voice. Mm. Say please. <laughs> <laughs> that is not what Mirage sounds like. Well, excuse me, I'm a dude. <laughs> You're a dude. <laughs> well, but Mirage is hard because she sounds like she's a smoking British lady. Slightly. Like, I she smokes or she's smoking hot? <laughs> no, like, she smokes, not she's smoking hot. <laughs> She is smoking hot, but anyway. Well done, Mr. Prosecutor. But that alone doesn't clear Officer Meekins of the crime. Well, Actually, Meekins is just like a huge butt to him, and that's why he's like, I'm gonna get him arrested get somehow. Him. I ask that you take another good look at the tire marks over there. The free marks are indicative of the blue badger mobile. That story Officer Meekins told about the shop on wheels getting stolen was just a lie. He drove the Blue Badger mobile here and committed the murder! What if Larry Butts is one of the other costumed 
Badgers. <laughs> I would die. Are you predicting this? I would die if that happens. Uh, I'll see if we meet another one based on their body language and stuff. I'll see. <laughs> then he used the car to move the body to the garage in the wild, wild west area. Okay. You believe he moved the body with the car? That's right. It was Officer Meekins himself who pointed us to the way he did it. The three tired tread marks are very telling. However, is the blue badger mobile the only thing capable of creating such a pattern? Probably the lovey dovey mobile. Another bit of proof. Also, the tri speeder from Mario Kart. I ask you to take another good look. The tire marks. Yes, the tire marks! The ones there behind the stage! They looked like they were doing donuts. They were hidden up until now by various pieces of stage equipment. As for when they were made, they must have been made after the rain had begun to fall, correct? Yes, and probably around the same time as when the killer's footprints were made. The tires on that blue badger mobile probably got pretty muddy because of that. I'd say it's the blue badger mobile because, well, that's pretty obvious too. Three marks are indicative of the blue badger mobile. Oh, no. Three tire marks. I have to agree that the Blue Badger Mobile has free tires. Of course! The only thing in this park that could have made those marks is that roving shop! Objection. Are you forgetting that there are, in fact, three of them? You can't simply ignore the pink and proto Badger Mobiles, Agent Lane. Of course, I didn't say it couldn't have been either of the other two. But I see no reason to drag them into this just to complicate things. Wow. This guy is terrible. How is he the top Interpol guy? <laughs> I don't know, that's what I'm saying. Hold it! How could he possibly have gotten the job? <laughs> he just went to, like, the chief of Interpol and handed him 220s. 220s? <laughs> 220s all takes? All takes? <laughs> My question, this is random, how the heck do you tie a cravat? Because it looks just like, <laughs> it looks like a wrap around his neck and then it's just, like, protruding I, forth. I don't know, and I still have like, to look up how to tie a regular tie. Yeah, Let same. alone a cravat. I haven't had to wear one. Actually. Well, girls tend to not have to wear ties well, as much as guys. Unless you're Emma Sky I'm, rocking the peppermint sure. one. If I'm at work, apparently, if I ever do like a wait staff like type of event, I have to wear the tie. But they've never put me on for those, so I've just lucked out for like the whole time I've had this oh, job. Oh yeah, and shout out to my sister Marty who became employee of the month at oh, her yeah! job. Yeah. Pretty oh, yeah. awesome. I got awesome. carpal cord and a gift card, and then I I texted Artie. I'm like. Bro. Getting Dairy Get Queen. Getting Dairy Queen, what she wants. <laughs> Everyone's like, we don't care about Dairy Queen. We don't there, have it. There are two ways that you can get to the top of the Interpol. You can, like, work your way up there or bribe a, a grower. grower. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you have some sort of proof that was, it was all a lie, correct? Of course not. Well, that was blunt. But suppose it is a lie. It would explain a lot of things. Like his movements and his whereabouts. I'm trying to think of what he looks like when he turns sideways, when he has his mm. when he has his fist out. He looks like a character, and I can't think of who he looks like. It's not the vague, but it's like some weird. <laughs> the vague. It's like some weird character. Hold it. And I can't think of what it is. Or like a dog. I don't know. He wears Star Fox. <laughs> wears Star Fox. So you still claim that the tire marks belong to the Blue Badger Mobile? It must have arrived on the scene after the ground had become wet with rain. Officer Regan's committed the murder. Then he used the car to move the body. Hold it. Besides the Blue Badger Mobile, there are other ways the body could have been moved. Recall that the Wild Wild West area, what it looks like. What? Only the Blue Badger Mobile and Mr. Deacon's body were in the garage. I'd say that's proof. I suppose if one were to look at that place, that would be the only logical conclusion. However, my experience tells me that the truth is usually not so easily found. Is there some sort of problem with Agent Lane's statement with regard to that scene? Looks like the only thing that that car was selling was death, not dreams. Only if what Agent Lane believes turns out to be true. The free tired tread marks are very telling, however. Is the Blue Badger Mobile the only thing capable of creating such a pattern? Okay, well, no. Wait, maybe? I thought it was the three marks, uh, or yeah, that one. Okay, let's look at the pink mobile. We don't have that in the court what? record. What? 
Stupid. Can we leave? No. Um, I think I know what it is, though. Okay. I think it's... I can say this because I really don't remember. I genuinely okay. don't. I think it's because there's no mud on the tires. Oh, that could be. Objection! Well, it's something. <laughs> we'll find out what. I think it's there's, there's no mud. Sorry, Agent Lane, but you suck. That's an impossible tale. And why is that? Those tire marks could not have been left by Officer Meekin's blue badger mobile. One look at the car would have told you so. What proves that the blue badger mobile had never been to this stadium? Um. Take that! Ooh, his face. The victim's body tells the true tale behind it all. What's wrong with you, Mr. Prosecutor? We're talking about the blue badger mobile. What does the body have to do with anything? Unless it's hiding some sort of secret. Well, I believe we should investigate this next, is all. Ha! Looks like you're no match for my wits after all. Wait, please allow me to take another good look. Wow, special vial on for the victim's body. This is where we should be focusing our attention. I have no idea what I'm supposed to be looking at. Perhaps you're a bit worn down by all this excitement, Mr. Prosecutor? It's none of your business. Just allow me to explain it once again. Take a good look at the tires. There's not a single dollop of mud to be found wow, on Wow, you were on it! Yeah. If this car had come to the backstage area and left those tire tracks, then the lack of mud on these tires stands out as very peculiar indeed. Then how do you explain the tire tracks, genius? Hey, I got it! What about Miss Olmeg's pink badger mobile? Don't be ridiculous! I was sweeping the entire time in the second tier scenes! Indeed, I believe we can rule her out as someone related to the crime. However, there is yet one more revolving, uh, roving store, as I recall. Oh! You mean the Proto Badger? That's a creepy badger. Yep. That's right. There was one more parking space inside that garage with tire tracks right next to it. <laughs> and it proves oh, the existence of a Proto Badger mobile. I didn't even notice that till now. Agent Lane, I suggest you find this Proto Badger mobile post haste. There must still be some sort of incriminating evidence in it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, did you hear something? Oh, oh no, this is me. <laughs> oh. oh. Some dude? Zombie? It's a zombie. It's a zombie. He's walking. Oh. Me? Who's this weirdo? Uh. Okay. Are you alright? This is something! Looks like we found our kidnapping victim. Where were you all this time? Wild West with kidnappers. He was in the room next to the one I was held in. Ran away using underground and got lost. Oh, it's Lance. Oh. The kidnappers. Hmm? What is it? I can't understand what you're trying to say. The, the kidnappers escaped wearing costumes. Did you see the faces of your kidnappers? No, I didn't see their faces. But two, one was a woman. A woman? Quite an important piece of testimony. Hey, what are you guys doing? Stop standing oh there and get gosh. your cops on this already. They look like they're about to go motorcycle off. <laughs> They've got awesome They've got sunglasses. They've such style. They, they really I do. like her really weird boa vest. Boa vest. You know, like a feather boa. Is that one that like a mink scarf? No. Look at the look at the fuzz on it. That can't be a mink scarf. Mink scarf would be like super is smooth. It? Oh. The is feather it? boa. It's like a fur scarf. Yeah, yeah. A feather boa is like that thing that like Hollywood stars would wear back in the day in the 30s with oh. like a smoking. When I hear thing. boa, I think of a snake. Like a boa constrictor? Yeah. Right, a feather boa has like the feather, it's like the feathery thing that wraps around your arms and you're like, oh, so aren't like... I dainty and elegant? Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll even let you guys have what the kid just said now. Consider it a gift. What in the world? I like their style. <laughs> now, are you going to get out of my crime scene or am I going to have to get rough? Ugh, again? You're nothing but a big bully. Come on, Mr. Edgeworth, let's go. Oh, no, 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 not you. You're a very important witness for my case. I'm not about to let you get away that easily. Don't count on me to testify because I won't. Not for you. That's right! I won't either! You hear me, the young, you, we on a whippersnapper? 
Hey, calm down! There's no need for all this hostility. I just want to take a statement from each of you. I'm not going to get rough on either of you, okay? I give you my word. Come on now, fair maidens. What do you say? Will you cooperate? In reality, he's just kidnapping everybody. <laughs> fair maidens! My, you little rascal! You sure know a way to a woman's heart! Lane Z says, The passage of time is but a fleeting moment, and a lady is young forever. Huh! <laughs> Trying to outdo my edgy poof, your fancy schmancy sayings! Let's get this over with! So we're clear, I'm only interested in giving you my statement. Sure, just as soon as Mr. Prosecutor leaves us be. Mr. Edgeworth! Sorry, Emma. It kills me to leave a beautiful woman like you. Ah, to be continued. Well, we'll keep moving. We can keep going for a little bit more. Keep moving. But I mean, it's after 9 o'clock at night. <laughs> I oh, gotta get ready you. for bed. You were the I'm one! I'm an old man! You were the one who waltzed into my room and was like, let's record. I'm like... I wanted to record an episode over the weekend, uh, on Sunday. On but Sunday. it took like five hours to upload the the next Justice for All video. Yep. Cause, oh, you did. You probably weren't around. Our internet was out for like half oh, the day. Oh, I, I knew that. I woke up this morning and I was like, time to start my day with the good old song. And then, like, it didn't load. I'm like, <laughs> no! <laughs> and you didn't get to start your day with a good old song. It's, it's <laughs> no. terrible. March 14th, 2.34 p.m., Wild Wild West. Looks like we got the boot again. With Lance safe, the focus of the investigation will shift solely onto the murder. You mean the infighting between the kidnappers? You give Kay, like, an always happy voice. Because she always has a smile on her face, just like, the, oh, this is gonna be great! Not when she's a mm, pouty <laughs> lip, or when she's like, because <gasps> she's done, like, her crying face, like, once. Oh, I haven't seen that. Yes, and also the identity of the remaining kidnapper. Miles, my boy! Who's this weirdo? You already saw her! Oh, oh, She's thought, Ring Pop Girl. She's Ring Pop Girl. I just saw Pink. I'm like, who's the chick with the pink hair? <laughs> Tell me it's true! Tell me they've really found my boy! Yes, Mr. Amano. We found him earlier in the stadium. Then, my little Lance is unhurt? He's not exactly the picture of perfect health, but his life is not in danger. He's being questioned right now by Agent Lane. Poor Lance! It must have been so horrible for him! Locked up like a... <laughs> he's, he, he's just like growling and clenching his money. <laughs> like every person. He's just like Stromboli from Pinocchio. <laughs> wow. He'd be the person where it's like, well, tornado. Time to go to the basement with all of my, my money. cash. And he's just like, That's like a Scrooge McDuck fan. Well, we'll just leave them. <laughs> he, he like uses um $5 bills for tissues. <laughs> Oh wait, we can actually just leave them! <laughs> Let's leave them. Let's leave. <laughs> wait! What are they doing here? What I'm are... watching you right. <laughs> <laughs> wait, so Maya and Phoenix Wright and Pearl are just like, Let's go on a boat ride, it'll be fun! Pearl's like, Check oh, out my new but, hot assistant but I right. Don't know, I don't know how to fish! Oh, it's easy, Pearl! Don't you worry about it! Uh, Maya, don't stand up on the boat! <laughs> hey, Phoenix! Back, back, back! Back, back, back! That's such a nice little thing they put in. <laughs> yeah, That's it, great. It really is. And this is probably, like, what time... What time what? period would you say this is during? Like, Maya this is, is probably This is about, after like, Bridge to the Turnabout. Before... The third... Before Godot? After Godot. After Godot. After was... Godot, before Turnabout Succession past Case. Okay. Before Phoenix Wright's last before trial. Before Phoenix Wright's last trial, right. Man, like... I wonder if he had, like, his last trial and he's like, I'm a bum. I can never show my face to the Faye family again. Maybe. It's probably Morgan's out of jail. She's like, <laughs> Morgan's not coming out of jail. Are you kidding? We don't know. She, she, already, she probably died from drinking too much pain. Yeah. They say that couples who cross this bridge together will find happiness. Or so the Gatewaterland pamphlet says. But you think that they'd already be happy because they were able to come together. Logistics aside, I wonder who came up with this tale and when. This bridge doesn't look old enough to be the stuff of legends. Well, some things are better left uninvestigated, don't you think? Ignorance is bliss! I'm watching you, right? That's great. Can we jump in the fountain? To think they were but a hotel, and now they have their own safari park attraction. 
Talk about a veritable goulash of rides and attractions. Why, so many of them, you'd think they would have a ninja house! Like, one of those buildings with a zillion secret places to hide in. Those are fun. Sounds like a... That sounds like something where it's like, Oh, hey, let's go to, like, the old abandoned skyscraper and do airsoft. <laughs> Which I had. There were people in my old high school who apparently who did, did that. did that? Yeah. Okay. Not skyscraper, like, warehouse or something. Oh. Still weird, though. Still weird. Well, they don't. Hey! How can you be so sure? Well, I know. I bet they really do have one, but it's in, hidden inside the real... Hidden in the real ninja fashion. Come on out, ninja house! I know you're around here somewhere. A hidden ninja house. Like she'll be looking for a lost pirate ship. Everybody needs a ninja. Uh, the, the ninja podcasts are the best. The children. This man looks suspiciously like the precinct. Look at that lovely smile on the blue badger's face! Oh, wait, that's the chief who's always at the computer! Yeah! <laughs> Look at the lovely smile on the blue badger's face! Ah, it's looking at me making stop! It's scary! It's alright, dear. You wanna know something? I was the one who created the blue badger! See? Look at his eyes! Don't they just look like- don't they look just like Daddy's? It's scary! It's scary because they do look like yours, Daddy! Oh. oh. Well, that was rather depressing. I think I'd better leave the two of them alone. Wow! <laughs> Ezra's just standing in front of them. Wow. I was wondering why they were just standing there awkwardly, and I guess that's why. <laughs> Why is there blue badger here too? Are you deathly allergic to him or, so or something? Um, it's not that. It's more like the half smile on its face. It's really unsettling. She's disturbed by the half smile. I'm more disturbed by its movements and how it managed to obstruct an investigation. Well, as funny as it was to just ditch everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Miles, my boy, I can't thank you enough. It was nothing. I'm still in shock over what happened to Oliver. But I have to say I'm relieved that Lance is alright. Oh, that's right. I mustn't forget to pass this on to Lance as soon as the police are finished with it. A letter. Eh. Please give me back my one million dollars. <laughs> oh, the way Lance is being chased after all by women, uh, it reminds me of someone I know. I almost can't believe you received yet another love letter, you know. Here, take a look at for yourself. Isn't this a breach of confidentiality? <laughs> it's a My fair dear Lance Amano, may I come see you again? With blood spotters on Your it. beloved Viola. <laughs> that says that? Really? Uh. The Tender Lender Lawn Company. <laughs> uh. Don't get with her, nope. <laughs> It's a very simple love letter. Oh, hey, let me see. Hmm? That's really weird. It's from a loan company called the Tender Lender. Looks more like a collection bill to me. Love letter data added to the court record. Ugh. Viola's pretty weird. You like, like voice you her, though. That's like if you started dating April Ludgate, but if she was like a loan shark. April Ludgate doesn't have ties to the Yakuza, though, so... That we know of! <laughs> <laughs> She's just a poor girl. He loves me. He loves me not. He loves me. He loves me not. Oh, that's the twelfth one! No, you can't give up, Lauren. Just one more try. Excuse me, but I can't help but feel a little bit sorry for all the flowers you've gone through. I like her outfit, by the way. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know... Oh my gosh! She... That outfit looks almost exactly like the one Viola wears. <laughs> yeah! I didn't realize that. <laughs> oh, that's insane. I was just thinking, like, it was more, like, traditional. It's it, yeah. I like it, though. It's nice. It's very modest. Yeah. I like that. Oh, and I know who she looks like. She looks like that chick from Majora's Mask that has the couple's mask that's like, Oh, my... And you? My, oh, my poor husband turned into a child. Just a little bit. It's the face. Andrew has red hair it's and blue face. eyes and a completely different outfit. Okay, well, and she it's looks... 3D. <laughs> <laughs> and I it can't literally help looks it's nothing not 3D. like that. They're both girls. I suppose if they were me, then. I believe you said that you are Lance's girlfriend when we first met, correct? Yes, I am. But oh, it's not like we both think of each other as lovers. But but he did give me this ring, so I guess we're not just friends either. Because this isn't just any ordinary ring. It tastes so sweet when you lick it. Oh, it's so wonderful. 
You mean to tell me that he gave you a lollipop ring? So, which is it? Have you guys not decided if you're going out, or is it just one-sided? Oh, by the way, I really think that, uh, co the... What, what company makes rain pops? Not Wonka. Wonka! No, it's some, some lollipop uh, Whatever company, company makes yeah. rain pops needs to have a side business of engagement rain pops. Where it's like, want to propose to your girlfriend, but you're too cheap to buy a diamond? Buy an engagement rain pop! Or if you haven't bought the ring yet. Because there are some people who wait to buy the ring till the person knows they're getting married so she can have a ring that it's she It's like, likes. oh man! Look at the size of the diamond on the ring! Oh, it's just an engagement ring pop! <laughs> <laughs> Decided. Shouldn't the parties involved naturally just know? My father used to work for Mr. Amano, and so Lance and I grew up together. <gasps> I said that out loud! I don't see how that's anything to be embarrassed about. So your father was an employee of the Yamato group. What did he do? I heard his job was to fly around the world. On Pegasus. Pegasus? Oh, Pegasus was the name of the airplane. The airplane belonged to the company. Y you had me there for a second. But now, it's all changed. My father, he isn't around anymore. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's her crying sprite. She's got the tears in her eyes. Uh, what? Oh, I didn't even notice stop that. Stop going! You need to stop looking at that screen! <laughs> the screen on the left is brighter. Here, it's a lot more obvious. No, I can't see it anyway. Oh. Maybe my I see! <laughs> I see! About ten years ago, he rode off- or he rode in Pegasus off to somewhere and never returned. Riding Pegasus to whereabouts unknown? Sounds like he was the stuff the legends are made of. It's been so long. I don't think I'd recognize him if we were ever to meet again. I'm so sorry, Lauren. But I won't give in to the sadness. I have to live. Yes, Lauren, live. I just realized she has spiky hair in the back. Because it Every, has, to be, a, has yeah. to be a little anime. About this incident. Uh, incident? But, but isn't the kidnapping already over and dealt with? I've been here the whole time, so I'm afraid I don't know much about any other incident. How did you come to know that Lance had been kidnapped? Oh, um, uh, that's because of my women's intuition! based everything on that? I know everything when it comes to my lands. It's really strange. It really must be destiny. Ugh, she started fantasizing again. So what are you going to do now, Mr. Edgeworth? We already established that there's a good chance that the killer is one of the other kidnappers. It's my duty to figure out who this other person is. I believe there is one location that might hold a clue or two. The isolation room, the crime scene, the kidnapper's hideout. Uh, we already were in the isolation room. The crime scene we got kicked out of, but the kidnapper's hideout? Ooh! It's often the case that some clues are overlooked at the crime scene itself. Which means we should give the stadium another sweep. That's pretty good! Very professional prosecutor-like of you. And of course, we'd go investigate it if, it hadn't if we hadn't just been tossed from there. True, and Agent Lane is still conducting his investigation there. Yeah, now get it together, will you, Mr. Edgeworth? Alright then, to do our part, we should leave them alone and investigate somewhere else. I believe there is one location that might hold a clue or two. The place where we were held as prisoners. Hold it, don't lock me in with you. I can't allow you to slander my good name as a great thief by saying I was captured. Not being able to escape from somewhere qualifies you as a cat caged bird kid. Besides, we checked that place out pretty well when we were there, but remember? Don't you think it'd be an even better idea to check somewhere else? Perhaps you're right. What I really need right now are leads to the killer's identity. The obvious location is the kidnapper's hideout. But we're still not allowed in, remember? Agent Lane and his men should be done with this area. In that case, there's no harm in asking the officer over there to let us in. Big-handed prosecutor. Not Let's prosecutor. Move. Well, we'll do that next time. Oh. Okay. Thanks for watching, everyone. Tune in next time. Uh, we're going to explore the kidnappers' hideout again, I suppose. Maybe we'll meet okay. squeaky-voiced forensics guy or something. No, uh -huh. ah, forensics. Yeah. That'd be <laughs> Anyhow, fun. until we meet again, my friends. Have a great day and God bless. I hope she is. She's much funnier. Like, when she's oh, what, what did you see about the investigation? Oh, oh, oh.